Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome once again to Football Pass. As ever, plenty to discuss, and I'm delighted to say that today's dynamic duo are Alec McLeish and Gary Caldwell. I could obviously mention who they played for and managed, but we'd be here till Christmas, which for some might not be a bad thing at the moment, but let's get our teeth uh, into the football. The Premier League, obviously, fellas, uh, just might be a race that's already run. Gary, would you say that with Man City's big win at Liverpool... That's it? I don't think it's ever totally over, but I think their dominance yesterday, the, the form they're in, uh, they look like heavy favourites to, to go on and win the league again. I thought yesterday they were outstanding. Uh, tactically dominated Liverpool, really aggressive in the press, uh, and they were back to their, their form of a couple of years ago, and it, it looks ominous for the rest. Considering their absences, obviously much has been made of who Liverpool are missing, Alec, and the knock-on effect, but no De Bruyne and no Aguero, only Jesus for a, a small part, really, of the whole season, and yet they seem as, as vibrant and as switched on as they've ever been. Yeah, Mark, they, they were fantastic. Yeah, yesterday when you think about the, the front three were like three wingers playing, playing mm. up front, you know, the false nine again, so, you know, if we come back to that subject... But uh, Gundogan as, as well had proven a, an amazing threat. His penalty was a shocker, right enough. But, um, you know, terrific. That some incredible play by the front three. Uh, wide, me, wide, you would think they were wide men, but no, they, they come inside and they play football. You know, Mares and Sterling there and, and Fo young Foden, you know, he's... He's grown up, he's a man this season. And, you know, whereas in the past couple of years, Pep's been kind of nursing him along gently. And you, you see the impact that he's making on that team now. They, they, they were really, really well in top for him. And he's got the defence right. Liverpool struggling a wee bit with the fact that they don't have regular defence defenders and I think it's impacted in the whole back four, back five even if you if you think of it the, the goalkeeper Allison's mistakes yesterday. Uh even, even he's proved that he's human. You, you, you know, and um losing Big Virgil is is obviously been a massive loss. But I think it's affected the full backs a wee bit as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and Raheem Sterling, how many times did he take on you know, Trent Alexander Arnold, and it's very unusual that we've seen uh, Arnold being as vulnerable as that with the, 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 the runs of Sterling going directly out. No, absolutely. There were, there were many pluses, weren't there, from a City point of view, Gary? And Alec, obviously you both played centre-half, makes the point that the knock-on effect of who's missing for Liverpool is affecting their, their whole back line and actually obviously a lot of the midfield as well with the two fellas having yeah. to play centre-half. Do you, do you go along with the whole consequential problems from Henderson and Fabinho at centre half. Yeah, I, yes. I think so. I think right. I think the goalie and the, the centre back are are vital to the team uh, and and given that stability and I, I think Virgil Van Dijk and Allison coming into the team showed you know how big an impact they made. Liverpool were a top mm. team before they came, but they transformed them onto another level. So. Having that stability at the back is vital, but I just think that once you start losing games and that confidence goes, it's very difficult to get it back. Even with top, top players, uh, they, they are shown that with a little bit of lack of confidence, they're struggling. And City uh, were so dynamic. Uh, the rotations and the movement they have just caused them so many problems that they, they, they didn't have the players uh, to, to deal with it. It's actually not that dissimilar to what happened to City last season, is it? With their main defender, Laporte, as, as he was, missing for a large part of last season. And they ended up losing nine games in the Premier League last season, which is hard to imagine uh, the way they are now. Would you think now, Alec, that Liverpool will have to try the two new centre-halves and push the two uh, of Henderson and Fabinho back into midfield? Because if they don't, they're going to continue to concede? Well, it's... It's a case of how much Klopp trusts the the, the new uh, signings, and and uh, also, you know, yeah, I, I definitely agree with Gary there in terms of it was an ongoing effect, like domino, you know, the domino crash, and you, 
you press one one falls and the rest fall because the midfield has been affected as well. But uh, certainly, if if Klopp has made these plunges into the transfer market, then you would expect that he's going to he's going to throw them in at some point and and try and get his midfield strengthened up again. Yeah, that's yeah. You know, no, there's no point otherwise. This this is a difficult window. That's always been a difficult window. I used to go when I was coaching in the Premier League and and in the Championship. I used to go to my bed round about eleven because I knew, you know, sorry, the clubs that I was at. I knew we weren't going to do any business, and and there's not great business to be done anyway at times. Mm. But you would yeah. you would expect well respect Klopp and his analysts to to be at tip top and that you know but to throw some guys right into the deep end in the Premier League um, who are uh, novices to it might be great players but they've got to hit the ground running yeah can you make a case Gary for for anybody else you mentioned it's not quite done and dusted for City can can United really mount a challenge after the late concession of equaliser against Everton at the weekend. Anybody else who's catching your eye really as a title contender? I, d I don't think so. I don't think anyone is is that convincing this year. It's obviously a unique uh, set of circumstances that every club is having to deal with, and that has gave us some freak results. Some some teams doing much better than expected. Some teams struggling. Uh, I think Man United have the squad to to. To, to mount a challenge, but I just think tactically on occasions they, they haven't been right. I think against a compact defence, they really struggle to, to break that down and, and it gives them problems. I think on the counter-attack and against the bigger teams, they've been fine. Mm. But to mount a title challenge, you have to be week in, week out against every team in the league, be able to, to get results. And that flexibility that City have and how they can set up the team and uh, how they can play different ways, uh, I think, really gives them a huge advantage in this. What about the three at the bottom, Alec? They're getting cut a long way adrift now. I think it's an eight-point gap even to Fulham, and they're three ahead of, of West Brom and four ahead of Sheffield United. Can you see anybody with the win for Newcastle at the weekend? They've had a decent couple of weeks. Brightly picked up just at the right time. Burnley have found some points. Can any of those be dragged into that bottom three, or is that also looking a little done and dusted? Yeah, it's, it's um, getting a bit ominous, you know, for the bottom three at the moment. You you, you would um, expect a big Sam to pull a rabbit out of the hat and do, do work his magic and, and get a couple of results, which um, absolutely in, in, inspires the confidence within the camp in, in these situations. Uh, and you feel as if you can win the next one if you, if you can get a win under your belt. You know, Fulham have been in a kind of yeah, a little bit of of an upturn and mm. with some performances. You know, when you think of them in the first few games, yeah, they they were uh, e easily beat. Now they're hard to beat. Uh, they look a more complete unit. But um, I, I feel that the teams above at the moment have just got too much for the bottom three. Would you go along with that, Gary? It's looking like a big gap. Yeah, it does. And it's, it's quite uh, unique, I think, for the Premier League. I've been there myself with Wigan m many years and we we were always, you know, in that bottom three th throughout the season, but they always felt like there was, you know, six, seven teams that, that could be drawn into that. And this year, there seems to have been that gap from quite early on uh, from the bottom three to, to the rest. And I think Fulham have have improved a lot uh, recently and, and are playing really well. I think, like Alex said, Big Sam will get, you know, West Brom playing. Sheffield United have improved recently, but it just feels like the gap is going to be too much to, to claw back and, and they, they will run out of games in the end. And in terms of perhaps the rest, Alec, the team that's caught the eye certainly to me this season, in terms of perhaps the most improved, Aston Villa, from where they were, one of your old clubs, of course, at the end of last season, Wow, they've kicked on with some excellent recruitment. Yeah, and that's the key. You know, that is the key, is recruitment. They, they have spent a lot of money, um, which would have been probably a little bit of a, a financial crisis last season had they gone down. But they managed to stay up. 
and they're all the better for that now. You, when you see some of the performances, doing the double over Arsenal, the Liverpool, um, <laughs> you know, what would we call it? The a, a massacre on the day, but um, maybe a bit of a freak. A freak, but you know the the, the signings of Watkins has been absolutely tremendous, and they they have just filled the whole team, you know, with with the right mm. parts. Uh, you know, you know they they have spent a fair. They've gave Dean some great support, and you know that's what you would want off your board. And you know, credit to Dean as well for, and John Terry for getting the team to the position that they're in just now, and. They're not really up and down. They've been more, obviously, with the points, Sally, the position in the table. They've, they've been winning more than they've been losing. Sometimes they surprise you with, with a wee loss, a home loss to West Ham last week, but who are also in brilliant form. Hmm. I, th- I think and going the other way. We, we asked him, Villa. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Gary. So, sorry, I was just going to say, yeah, Alec, we, I think Aston Villa have shown real stability as a football club. You know, at, at no point has. Uh, <laughs> The manager being under pressure, they they seem like they have a clear plan. They know what they're doing in recruitment, and that breeds confidence right through the football club. And Alex being a, a manager much longer than me, and I think having that support as a manager is vital to allow you to to go and and play the way they're playing and get the success they're having. Yeah, that's the kind of support we'd all want as managers, Gary, isn't it? <laughs> And, and so rarely get. <laughs> uh, but yeah. tell exactly. What, uh, exactly. Tell me tell about what, it, fellas. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know better than, than than many. Going the other way, although I think the club are showing faith in their uh, excellent manager. In fairness, in Ralph Hasenhutl, Southampton are having a, a horrendous few weeks. In fairness, it's probably largely down to a horrendous injury list, but they are stuck in a, a spiral of bad results, and and they're not a bad team, are they, fellas? No, I, I don't think they are a bad team. I think the, the the season, the unique set of circumstances everyone finds themselves in, and and I think every team has had moments where they've had these injuries come in all together, and and you have to try and cope with that as a squad. And they have struggled, obviously the the nine nil again, and the 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 mental implications that has for the players, for the manager, for the football club. Uh, will, will affect them probably longer term, and to follow that up with a defeat at Newcastle again, it looks like they're in a bit of a crisis that that they have to get out of. But I think the manager's excellent. Again, he, I think he shows calmness under pressure. I think the club show that calmness, and that will allow them to to get out of this little rut that they're in. One last one. I don't want to freak you two Scotsmen out with the summer uh, in mind, but how many good young English players are starting to to blossom and, and be available to Gareth Southgate, particularly in that kind of front third, if you like, of the pitch from Foden you've both mentioned, Grealish, Madison, Sancho, Rashford. The list goes on and on. It's slightly scary for the Scots for the summer, isn't it, Alec? Slightly different to the rugby teams, I think, yeah. Um, <laughs> Good point. Good point. <laughs> uh, no, we, we, we haven't won that one for a while, but so we're, we're, we're gloating a little bit this weekend. But, uh, yeah, you, you know, it's... But but I'm, I'm also seeing, uh, you know, a surge in, in the Scottish players over the last couple of years. Obviously, a lot of them are now playing at a really high level with, with good uh, performances, um, you know, every week. McTominay almost a fixture in the Man United now. And and uh, John McGinn, who, you know, mm. Gordon I picked him away back in the day as well, Gordon Strachan. And, uh, you, you know, it's because they're playing at the highest level. But, you know, England just ha- they have so many riches in terms of choice of player. And uh, when you, you hear Gareth at one of the last um, international get-togethers saying they had a bit of a crisis injury, injury um, kind of, um, they were going to uh, dunt them a wee bit. But, you know, it, it could quote on, on guys that were coming in, uh, like Hudson O'Doy and... And about three others who, you know, Declan Rice at the time as well. He says, I can bring Declan. You know, so these, these are all £50 million pound players. So it is, um, mm. uh, you, know, you know, tremendous resources that uh, Gareth has in, in terms of um, the Scottish challenge against them in the summer. But, 
you know, uh, you, you, everybody has their day, as you've seen at the weekend with uh, the national rugby team of Scotland, and well done to Gregor Townsend. I thought I had to get that. It's a good point. That, it's a good yeah. point, Gary. It's a very good point. Only takes a minute to score a goal and all that. It's, it's a brilliant point. And it, I, I, I mean, I, I take your point as well. I think England, I was actually talking to my big brother last night about it. I think the the options they have, the squad depth that they have, they will be heavy favourites uh, at the Euros, but they, they have a massive team to, to overcome in the group. And, and that's Scotland. And like Alex said, that uh, McTominay, McGinn, Tierney, we have players as well that are playing at a higher level and doing well. So it'll be a fantastic occasion uh, when it when it comes along and hopefully supporters are, are there to watch it. Well, absolutely. That That is certainly what we're all hoping for. There's an awful lot to play for this season, north and south of the border. And we're going to get our teeth into uh, the Scottish scene in our next chat. But for the moment, fellas, always good to talk. <laughs>